Hey guys, welcome to this introduction to Audiority Xenoverb. Xenoverb is an algorithmic reverb plugin which comes with 10 different algorithms. And in this video, we're going to have a look at the overall layout, the features, and how the reverb actually sounds with some incoming audio. Now, what I'll do first, I'll have a look at the, um, the layout and what the controls do. And we're going to start at the top here. Now, this button here, this, this section at the top actually deals with presets. And the first button we'll look at is this randomize feature. Now, this is quite useful because there are, as I said, there are 10 different algorithms to choose from. And this allows you to randomize all the controls and the algorithms, which means that you might be able to come up with something that you wouldn't have come up with by yourself. So that's a very useful feature to have. Moving on to the next button, this is an undo feature. If I click the, the, the button now, uh, it'll open up a dialog box that allows me to reset to the last save version. So if I click OK, it's going to take me back to my initialized preset. Now the window in the middle here, this deals with preset selection. If I click on the window, I'm able to select presets based on the algorithms themselves. And as you can see, there's plenty of presets in each algorithm to choose from. And the arrows to the left and right of this window allow you to scroll through the presets. So let me go to my initialized preset. This button here allows you to save the preset. A dialog box will be opened up, which will allow you to save it to a location of your choice, which I won't do right now. And then finally, we have a delete preset button. I won't click on this now, but this deletes the currently selected preset. Now moving down to the main window, this window here allows you to select the 10 different algorithms. We'll come back to that in a second. And then we have the reverb controls themselves in this section here. We'll come back to those in a second too. And then finally down at the bottom, we have an active switch, which effectively turns the reverb on and off. There's a freeze switch. This will freeze the incoming audio and then the reverb is processed on a feedback loop, which leads me on to the limiter switch. Now this is useful in case you're using the freeze function and, and if that becomes too loud, the limiter will stop it clipping. So that's useful to have as well. Now let's go back to the controls. Most of the controls are common to most reverb plugins, but there are two controls or two knobs here which are specific to the individual algorithm that you have chosen. So let's start off with pre-delay. This one's fairly self-explanatory. This will introduce a pre-delay to the reverb signal between zero and 1500 milliseconds. Then we have a diffusion knob. This increases the diffusion or decreases the diffusion. Reverb time. This is set as a percentage because of the different algorithms. And then there's a modulation dial. Now the modulation is specific to the algorithm. It's a combination of LFO, chorus type effects. Uh, and it's worth experimenting with what the modulation dial does with each sound because it's going to affect each sound slightly differently. Then we have a tone knob. Uh, you can think of this as a low pass filter. This just allows you to filter out some of the higher frequencies. I'm going to skip these two for now. And then we have a mix knob. This is a wet dry mix. So this is 100% dry, 100% wet. Now it's worth noting that if you right click on any of the buttons, any of the knobs, you're able to lock that particular parameter. So that as you're switching between presets, this parameter here won't change. So that's also quite useful. If you want to keep a certain reverb time, but you're not sure which algorithm or preset you want to use, it's useful to be able to lock that parameter. Let me just unlock that. Now we're going to focus on these two buttons here as we scroll through the algorithms because they change their purpose depending on which algorithm you have chosen. So let's start off with room. In this case, they're quite self-explanatory. You've got a reverb size or a room size rather. This controls the size of the room. And then we've got a low frequency cut. Now this controls the low, low frequency cut between 20 and 500 hertz. This just allows you to take out some of those lower frequencies that you might find muddying up your mix. Now let's move down to the hall. Um, in this case, the size has been replaced with a mid button. Now what does that do? Well, this allows you to alter the mid frequency gain at 1500 hertz. So let's 
put this dial into the middle. At the moment, you can see that it's re reading zero decibels. This allows you to increase or decrease the mid frequencies at 1500 hertz by six decibels. So it's almost like having a bit of EQ control over the reverb itself. This is quite a useful frequency to push forward in the mix or pull it back in the mix if you're finding your reverbs a little bit too forward. Uh, let's move down to the plate algorithm. We've actually got two plate algorithms. And again, you've got mid frequency control here and you've also got the low frequency cut. That's common to both plate algorithms. And then we have a spring reverb algorithm and we have a knob here now called chirp. This is a technical term and this allows you to uh, increase or decrease the high frequency chirp of this particular algorithm. And again, we've got a low frequency cut here as well. Now, these are some of the more interesting algorithms, um, in my opinion. Glass is a modern diffusive transparent algorithm. And this allows you to create really big, lush, um, expansive reverbs. And we go back to having a mid control here, a mid boost or cut control. And we've got the low frequency cut. Flow is based on a 90s hardware reverb unit. I'll let you guess which one, but it's hugely diffusive, made with all pass blocks. Now, in this case, we have a bloom control. And what this does is it increases the, it increases the diffusive blocks and slows down the reverb build. So I would um, suggest increasing, using this on an incoming audio source, increasing your mix to 100%, and just having a play with that bloom control to see how it affects the sound. Right, let's move down to Shimmer. Shimmer you've probably heard of before. Shimmer actually gives you two um, pitch shifting algorithms to play with on your audio source. So what this does is this gives you a dual pitch shift in a feedback loop. So you have two pitch shift knobs to play with here. Each one can increase or decrease your pitch shifting by 24 semitones. So that's two, two octaves worth of pitch shifting you've got to play with on this one. And this is the kind of reverb that you hear a lot in ambient music where you will have long um, evolving um, pitched effects on top of your reverb. We'll have a look at that one in action a little bit later on. And then we come down to the Bode algorithm. This is a sound design frequency shifting in a feedback loop kind of thing again. Um, instead of your pitch shifting, you've actually got a frequency knob now which will allow you to control the frequency uh, shifting between zero and 5,000 hertz. And then your band mix is your pitch shifter side band mixer. So play with this and hear how that affects the sound too. And then finally, we've got a formant algorithm. This is quite an interesting one. Um, this puts a formant filter before the reverb algorithm. And the formant knob here allows you to shift between all the individual vowels. So you've got A, E, I, O, U. And the peak button allows you to have control of the gain over the formant peak. So this can create some very interesting um, ambient textual effects too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the initialized preset because we've got this reverb actually set up on a piano. So I'm going to go through some of the reverb algorithms now to see how they sound. Let's go back to room and let's just see if we've got this piano sound set up. We have, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the reverb on and let's have a look at some of these presets here. So let's look at room and let's look at a huge room and see that, how that affects the sound of this piano. I'm just going to go through some presets here so you can hear how it sounds.
So the standard algorithms, they've got really beautiful, evolving, kind of massive quality to them. Um, these are the kind of reverbs I would imagine you'd find useful for cinematic or ambient music. So let's close this one down, uh, switch this one off. Now I've got a vocal sample here, which I'm going to play in a loop. Feeling lost and out of place. Empty eyes. And again, I'm going to open up the reverb and I'm just going to go through some presets so that you can hear how this is affected by the different algorithms. Feeling lost and out of place. Empty eyes look upon my face. Nowhere to go, nowhere to run I just want to find someone Feeling lost and out of place Empty eyes look upon my face Nowhere to go, no. Really nice on vocals, really clear, really expansive. I'm going to close this one down and let's now look at a drum loop. Actually, this is really nice. It sounds like a kind of room mic that you get with a drum set up. Okay, let's move on to some more ambient sound now. I've got Omnisphere set up. Let's just deactivate this for a second. Oh, so this is just one of Omnisphere's weird kind of textural soundtracky sounds. All the effects in Omnisphere are turned off, so what you're hearing is just a dry signal. And that's a filter in Omnisphere. So I'm just going to switch this reverb on now.
Right, so you can see there's some really weird stuff that you can be doing with the um, different algorithms here. Now let's switch the ambience off. And finally, I've just got a little synth line. Um, I've actually put an EQ on the synth itself just to take out some of the bottom frequencies. I'm not doing any processing apart from just taking out some low frequencies to this arpeggiated synth line. Let's have a listen to this. And it does have some delay on it already, but no reverb. Actually, let's try this with the drum break as well. So I hope you can see that there's plenty of scope, some really, really incredible sound design with this, this plugin itself. There's lots on offer here. There's lots of different algorithms you can choose from. So that gives you a little taste of what's on offer with Xenoverb. Um, I hope you found the video useful and thanks for watching.